All right, I don't even need my notes to introduce uh, our next speaker. You know, one of the things that makes for a good open source project is good code. But what also makes uh, for the success that we see in open source is good people. And, uh, you know, when I talked about sort of good projects becoming good products, creating value, um, you know, I think Linus Torvalds is a good example of a great leader in open source. And our next speaker, Ahmad Susu, is a great example of an open source leader uh, in business. Ahmad has been at Intel Corporation working on open source since 2003. He was one of the first business leaders to recognize the power of open source and used it to create new innovation in the telecommunications sector and essentially created the majority market share for Linux in telecommunications as early as 2003, 2004. Today, he continues to be a leader in open source. He runs the open source technology group at Intel. He's on the board of the OpenStack Foundation. He's uh, on the board of our core infrastructure initiative uh, on the uh, OCF group uh, and many, many more. It is my pleasure to welcome someone who I've known for more than 10 years, Ahmad Susu from Intel. Good morning. So it's, uh, I'm, uh, it's always awesome to be uh, here uh, back in China. I speak, uh, I come to China, I speak at conferences in China at least uh, once a year. And, and this specific time is special. It's special because um, for the first time, uh, my family came with me. So I have very tough audience. I have my two children, my wife and two children, my 12-year-old my, uh, and 13-year-old sons here uh, watching me tonight. So, so I do have very, very tough audience. And, and regardless of how comfortable I am uh, speaking in China, you know, uh, uh, again, you know, forgive me if I'm, uh, you know, uh, performing for my kids. So, so with that, um, uh, let me, um, I, I want to start with something, build on uh, uh, some of the things that Jim talked about. So, um, I, I've been managing the open source technology center at Intel for over 17, 18 years now. I, I was, I, I was, uh, I've created that group uh, way back when we, uh, when, we tr when we were trying to enable Linux in the telecom market. And um, one of the uh, things that is not very well known, maybe known here in China, but not very well known uh, 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 globally, is that, and, and the Open Source Technology Center, my group, is a very large group. We have a lot of open source engineers. But what people don't realize is that 600 of the Intel open source engineers in my group are here in China. In fact, in fact, it makes me kind of mad when people start talking about China and not understanding open source. We have some of the best open source engineers here in China. Almost 90% of the virtualization leadership, for example, and I can give you many examples of the amazing open source engineers here in China. So, um, in today's talk, you know, I am always humbled to, uh, 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 to talk about some of the projects that, uh, that the Intel open source engineers are working on and some of, the, uh, uh, some of the things that they are creating and some of the uh, uh, real world problems that they are, sol that they are solving. And, and it's always, and, and everything I, I will say today is really trying to represent this work and, 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 and to talk about it and hopefully you can join us in working on some of these uh, really cool open source projects. So, um, so let me start with, um, you know, with something that all of us probably know by now. So all of us know that um, the cloud software defined infrastructure is now well established. Um, all of us are familiar with, with, with uh, software defined compute, software defined storage, software defined networking. It's really just the evolution of the modern data center and the automation of the modern data center uh, uh, that, we, that we live in today. And, and the truth is that none of that would have been possible had it not been 
for the open source projects that creates the cloud software defined infrastructure. Cloud native, Kubernetes, KVM, OpenStack, Linux, all of these projects are the projects that made the amazing software defined infrastructure that most of our businesses run on actually viable. Now, I believe that this model is going to uh, be extended, extended well beyond cloud. So we think that this model is going to extend it into areas like automotive, industrial edge, beyond the existing usages, beyond the existing using Linux to run the entertainment system in the car and so on, beyond any of those things. So in fact, if you take the car example, if you take the car example, so um, the car of the future is going to be a, a data center on wheels. And that data center on wheels is going to be software defined, but it's going to be very special uh, way of software defined. There's going to be many operating systems. Your instrument cluster will run an operating system. Your, your middle panel will run an operating system. Your mirror will run an operating system. The back media and video playback will run. Uh, all of these will run different operating systems. Some of them are Android derived. Some of them are Linux. Some of them are microcontroller and real time operating systems. But this is what we see as what will be the future and how industries like the automotive industries will evolve into, uh, into this software-defined world. Now, now these, um, uh, uh, these type of uh, changes in the industries and, and these type of usages requires new technologies. And in new technologies, because if you take, go back to the example I've given about cars, now you have a situation where you have to, uh, uh, to accommodate what is called a critical safety, a critical safety system. At the same time, you have to accommodate the, the, normal, uh, the normal systems, the video playback and so on. So now you have a mix of a safety critical and non-safety critical system within one environment. And that extends to things like industrial and in other areas. And, and w some of the things that I'm going to be talking about is some of these new projects that will enable these type of usages. You know, the software-defined car, software-defined cockpit, software-defined uh, software industrial automation, uh, and so on. So, but also, by the way, uh, uh, even in the cloud software defined infrastructure, things are not completely done yet. There is a lot of evolution, there is a lot of work, there is a lot of definitional work that is happening in that end. And I will also, such things like securing containers, you know, uh, and, and some of these I will also talk about a little bit. So let me, let me start with talking about uh, virtualization and containers. When you, uh, when you look at the isolation continuum, on the one hand, you have containers. And containers are awesome. Containers are very, very quick, you know, uh, 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 blazing fast. You can bring up a container and a, and a microservice really, really quickly, turn it down, and so on. Uh, virtualization are great because you are, they're very stable, very secure, uh, and this is how most of the world runs today. And you're able, you're able to run an entire environment. Uh, containers share, share a kernel, and, and w which, which effectively means that if, if one container is compromised, the security of other containers within that same environment are also compromised. And, and virtual machines are, uh, you know, they're great, they're stable, but they're also slow. So, so it's always been a choice between speed or security. And one of the, uh, one of the amazing projects that our engineers at Intel started working on a few years ago is to find a way to bring in both speed and security. And this is what we tried to do with uh, uh, what we did with Intel Clear Containers. And, and interclear containers basically takes containers and allows you to run, uh, allows you to, to be seen uh, to use virtualization technology to add security to that container. And this is what we uh, call kata containers, where multiple projects came together that were working on similar technologies 
and merge together to create the Kata containers projects. And, and Kata, by the way, is means trust. But the, the point of Kata containers is that, uh, is that to have a hardware secure containers that it still have the container property, meaning it does conform the, 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 the container interface and it does uh, uh, boot, it, it, it does have the fast properties and so on, but it is also uses the virtualization technology, so it is very, very fast. So, uh, you know, Kata Containers 1.0 was released and it is done in partnerships with a lot of companies from Google to Microsoft to Huawei to a lot of companies to Hyper who came together to, uh, to bring this together. And, and it's very simple. It's, it's complete runtime that is, that's from like a scheduling standpoint, like from a Kubernetes standpoint, because Kata containers comply with the, with the, uh, with the open, uh, with the, uh, with, with, the, um, with the open container initiative and the, the APIs, it sees it as just a container, and, but it's still you get, the, get that same security. Now, we think that we have, you know, uh, we have made a significant improvement by this. By, but while we were doing this, we realized that, um, that virtualization technology is also becoming really stale. So uh, virtualization has a very, very long history. Virtualization has been around for, in some form or another, for 50 years. So it is very, very stable. And people love that it is very stable and they run their workloads on, but it's also very, very stale. And so we started looking at, at what is it that we can do to improve virtualization technology in, uh, in, in in just in, not, in, not just in the cloud, but also in the data center as a whole. And what we found is that you take uh, the, uh, probably the mainstream uh, uh, virtualization infrastructure, KVM, and you look at it, and it's, it's, it's something like two million lines of code. And you look at, like, what do these two million lines of code do? And it turns out that over a million of them are things to uh, uh, dealing with emulation, emulation floppy drive, and, and all sorts of things that are completely obsolete from, the modern, uh, from modern usages. So one of the things that we've worked on and we've been prototyping is to kind of bring this virtualization and, and to create a, a much smaller footprint uh, uh, KVM virtualized uh, virtual machine that is a fraction. And just to give you an idea where it is at today, it is at something like 200,000 lines of code instead of the 2 million. Just, just the amount of drop by, by just separating the emulation from virtualization. And by the way, most hardware platforms don't need, because modern hardware does not need that emulation, so we feel safe that it's, it's good to do that. Now, I talked about cars, and I talked about how cars are going to be software-defined. Well, how are they going to be software-defined without the right, uh, without the right uh, uh, virtual machine? So this is the virtual machine that we've created uh, under the Linux Foundation. It's called Acorn. And Acorn is a functionally safe uh, uh, virtual machine. A, a virtual machine, the, a hypervisor that can run for functionally safe workloads. So you are able to mix now, you know, run uh, a completely uh, uh, functionally safe system alongside the same software-defined infrastructure with the rest of the car systems, whatever other operating systems you are running, that, and you are able to share and pool things like do the graphics sharing, uh, uh, all the, the relevant things to the car, Bluetooth, USB, and all of these other things that, and media, things that cars care about, into a, a truly IoT and a car-based um, car uh, 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 hypervisor. And even though we started the Acorn project only a few, like few months ago, we've, we've, we're already seeing uh, a great result. People are already starting to use it. If you look at uh, uh, Harman at the Auto China 2018 show, introduced their uh, next generation intelligent cockpit. It was built on Acorn. 
uh, Alibaba's, the, the work that we've done with Alibaba on uh, the electronic cockpit also is based on Acorn. So it's amazing to see uh, you know, the evolution and, and how people are beginning to use these new projects. So I do encourage you a lot to please participate in, in some of these new projects. Um, next, I want to talk about Linux. And I, I want to talk about uh, 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 some of the work that our engineers are doing in, in, a, in a distribution that we call a modern Linux distribution. And, and the reason we call it modern, by the way, is, is more, uh, uh, yes, there is a lot of things that I, I can talk about, about the features of this Linux. Uh, the, the reason we call it modern is because we've designed this, uh, uh, this with, a, with a new development model that, that is much more friendly to modern usages. So we're not really encumbered with the complicated packaging systems and, and dependency trees and, and, and the way Linux is, is typically packaged. And, and one of the conscious decisions that we've done up front is that we wanted to make it really, really easy for all distributions to steal, to take, to take things from uh, the clear Linux distribution that we've created and to put it in their own distributions. And here is why. You know, in clear Linux, we implement all platform features. Um, and so what does that mean? So uh, one, of the, one of the things that is not really well known when you look at not just the kernel, an entire Linux distribution, is that um, for a feature to be useful for an end user, the feature must be implemented top to bottom in the kernel, in the libraries, in middleware, in multiple areas. You know, if it's uh, machine learning in TensorFlow, if it's using Kubernetes and Kubernetes and so on. But the entire stack needs to be uh, enabled and optimized for those features. So we do platform features and we do performance. In addition to that, we don't make any compromises on performance to lower the bar to a least common denominator. So we really focus on making Linux work really, really well and utilize the hardware really, really well. And, and you can just Google you know, and, and, and search for you know, uh, 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 what's the performance impact, and you will see in a lot of benchmarks that the result of this is 4x performance difference. Not 10% difference, 4x, 400% performance difference in some of these. So again, the other things we are doing with Clear Linux is creating a model where we are able to react and respond really, really quickly, not just for software, not just for hardware bugs, but also for software bugs, to, to make available those mitigation really, really quickly. And a lot of that is rooted in the development model that we use and how we create uh, and how we are able to be current. Current means very close to the upstream, very modern software update, atomic updates, and, and all of these other features. So I really do encourage you to take a look at Clear Linux. And please feel free, if you have your own distribution, take whatever you want. We will even help you. So. Um, Finally, I just want to close with, um, with a plug for our Edge projects. You know, Acreno is, a, is an umbrella, our umbrella Edge projects that we've created with many partners, many partners here in China, in the US, under the Linux Foundation. Acreno is where we feel that all the Edge programs will eventually uh, uh, be hosted under. And we're, we're, we're going to be working very closely with all of you and with the Linux Foundation to make this happen. One of the things that we've done in support of this is to open source our Wind River Titanium Cloud product, a, a carrier grade edge product. And that product, obviously, we will um, integrate into Ecreno. So with that, you know, uh, I want you to thank you very much. And I want to thank the Linux Foundation staff. And thank you very much, Jim. And uh, have a good rest of conference.